All right, so for day one of the class, this will be our, our quick introduction to HTML. Uh, what we're going to do is if you've never written HTML, you're going to learn a pretty good amount. If you have written HTML, again, it might be a bit slow at the moment, but uh, you'll probably learn a thing or two new. Um, our, our workflow will be that we're going to be using a, a, a pretty powerful yet simple code editor to write our code, and then we're going to use a web browser to see our result. So we're going to write our, some code, and we're going to see the result in the web browser. We're going to focus on HTML today. So if you have experience in any code editor, you can use it if you'd like, if we've got it installed here. But what we're going to use is this code editor that we've got installed called Notepad++. So click on your Start menu and search on that search box right there, Notepad++, not plain old Notepad, that's pretty basic. We want Notepad++. This does not come built into your computer. If you want to go do this at home tonight, you don't have Notepad++ built in. You have to go download it. Notepad++.com, something. Find Notepad++ on our computer. At home, you have to download it. Let me make some notes here our code editor, our class code editor, Notepad++ for Windows. Uh, if you're on a Mac, you have many options as well. We could do Text Wrangler, we could do Sublime, we could do Brackets, Mac, um, we have, I think we've got a couple of code editors in, in the room here. If you'd like to use that one, that's fine. But uh, at, at home, you know, um, well, you could use, there is brackets for Windows. I don't think there's Sublime for Windows. There is no text wrangler for Windows. There's also Visual Code, Visual Studio, Eclipse, Dreamweaver. There's lots of ways to write code. It doesn't matter what you like to use. You can use whatever you'd like. In this class, we're going to use Notepad++. So go ahead and launch Notepad++. I like to use this for this portion of the class because it's pretty quick and dirty. We write our code, we view our code, that's it. We don't need a very complex IDE. Notice how fast it loaded up. Um, so we're going to use this code editor. We don't need to learn every single aspect of it. Again, just the parts that are important to us. So I've launched Notepad++, go up to File, New, File, Menu, New, and then File, Save As. If you brought a flash drive, you can save your work on your flash drive. I'm going to save mine to my desktop. I'm going to write today's date. And you have to be very sure that your save type here is not normal text. You're about to make a website, a web page. So what should our save as type be, possibly? HTML. So from the save as type here, select hypertext markup language. So I'm going to save this. Again, I'll give you a copy of my code at the end of the day if you would like it so that you can confirm what you've done compared to what I've done. And I find that students find that very helpful, especially if they went astray somewhere. So I've saved my document. Make sure you've saved it as .html. You'll see the tab right there, .html. If it's .text, do that Save As again and change it to Hypertext Markup Language. And um, we then get here the best and worst thing that a programmer can see, a blank document. It's the best because I can make so many things with this. And it's the worst because I can make so many things with this. Where do I start? So. We can write 
a variety of languages. If you take a peek over language, we have all of these possible programming languages that we can write. Um, probably a bunch you've never heard of, but we're writing HTML. And so what we need to do first off is define what sort of document type we're working with. If you've never used HTML, we have to get used to the concept of using tags. Uh, tags define the, uh, the structure and the content of our document, but the very first tag here has to say this is an HTML document we're working with. And tags in HTML are always defined by the less than and the greater than symbols. On the keyboard, that's comma and period. Shift comma, shift period. So the less than, the greater than, for shorthand, I'll often say the opening angle bracket or the closing angle bracket, or angle brace, angle bracket, braces, brackets, whatever you want to call them. But um, this is going to be our syntax, our way of writing HTML code. These are tags. Um, so the very first tag we're going to write inside the angle brackets, exclamation point, D-O-C-T-Y-P-E space HTML. I'm saying that the document type, what I'm creating here, is of type HTML. And in this uh, syntax, in this writing that is, the way I wrote it, with this space and the capitalization and such. And if you've had experience in the past with HTML, you might remember the doc type, and it was a big doc type that was, you know, DTD, dash EN, XML, 1.1, whatever. It was a huge document type. Here we're simply saying our document type is HTML. Actually, HTML5, the latest standard of the code. And no, we don't put a 5 there, it's just HTML. Um, press Enter, line 2. Then we're going to write the HTML tag. And we're going to see that I'm going to need to start to use shorthand pretty quickly because I'm not going to say less than, greater than, over and over and over. I'm not going to say angle bracket, angle bracket, over and over. I'm going to say the HTML tag, which is our shorthand that we need the less than and the greater than symbols with HTML in between. HTML is hypertext markup language. It's a language where we can mark items in a document. I'm going to mark this to be centered. I'm going to mark this to be bold. I'm going to mark this to be bullet points. I'm going to mark this as a link. That's the ML, markup language. I'm going to mark elements of my document. And it's with tags. <clears throat> Most of the tags <clears throat> in HTML have a pair, like a pair of shoes. So let's press enter a couple of times, line 4, and I'm going to close the starting HTML tag. I'm going to mark between here and here is HTML. Between here and here is bold. Between here and here is a picture, marking elements of our document. Closing tag of HTML looks very similar like the opening tag, but it has a slash before the keyword, keyword HTML. So if you wrote this properly, you should see that they both become purple, and you see a little red line connecting the two. This is what a civilized code editor will give you. If you're using plain old notepad, it's going to be black and white text. And color text and such is pretty, but it has a use if you have any programming experience. And these things will make sense as we get further. So here I've created my HTML tag pair. I'm going to go between the two tags of HTML back to line 3. In between those two tags, I'll then tab on the keyboard. Let's tap to jump over a few lines, and I'll write the head tag, 
which has a pair. So that means I'll give myself a couple of enters and close the head tag. Opening tag, closing tag, again, shorthand. It gets cumbersome to over and over say angle bracket head, angle bracket space, angle bracket slash head. I'm going to say the head tag, which is a pair of code like that. And probably like 98% of HTML tags have a pair. When they don't, I'll point them out. One that doesn't have a pair is the doc type. It's just one line as is. It doesn't have a closing tag. But pretty much every other tag we're going to work with has an opening and closing element. After head on line 6, give yourself a new enter after line 5, we'll then write body, tag, which has a pair, This whole thing is our main HTML element. There's something called the head element, something called the body element, and all of this is HTML5 compliant. Uh, let's back up to line 7 and we'll tab there. These tabs that I'm having us do here are actually optional. You don't have to press these tabs, these indents, we could have it all lined up on one line like this, no problem, that'll work. But just for readability, it's useful to tab, to indent when you're in different conceptual elements, because then it's easier for you to see your code, debug your code, edit it later, find problems with it. We'll do the uh, tried and true first uh, program that everyone does from time immemorial when we learn a new language. The tradition oftentimes is to make it say hello world. So we're gonna make our project follow that tradition. We're gonna have it say hello world. So we'll simply type hello world. And if you have any experience in the other classes, I know you're tearing your hair out, but just wait a bit. We're getting there. We're getting to your level. So anyway, we'll write hello world. That's a website there. That's a web page. Not fully complete, of course, but there's a web page. Um, our workflow will be that we're going to write code, we're going to save our project, and then we're going to run the code. Notepad is telling us, Notepad++ is telling us we haven't saved recently. That little floppy disk there means you haven't saved. It's red. So if you go up to File, Save, or Memorize the Shortcut, Control-S, or press the Save icon, save your work. Notice the disk becomes blue. This is a common mistake. Uh, we write our code, we forget to save, and we try to run our code, and it doesn't work. It's, it hasn't been saved, it hasn't been updated. Remember to save your work. And then in Notepad, I want to see this result. I, so to speak, want to compile this result. I want this to be interpreted. I want to see the result in the web browser. So we'll go up to Run Menu. We have here all of your favorite web browsers. Choose any one you like. I'm just going for the first one in the list, Firefox. Any one you like. Save it. Run Menu. Launch Firefox. It opens up the Firefox web browser, Hello World. Here you go, pat yourself on the back if it worked. You're a web programmer. Anyone having any trouble? Someone didn't work or something? Okay, let's check that out for a moment. Um, so far, let's make sure it looks something like that. Okay. 
All right, so yes, very, very basic here, but we've got a result. We've got a web page. It's loading in our web browser. This will be our workflow. We're going to write some code, save it, and we're going to run to see the results. Any web browser you like, I've just chosen Firefox as the first one on the list. Um, so we get some content that's output right here in the main part of the window. And if you usually w visit a website, don't you see some sort of message up on the tab? When you visit Amazon, it might say some message up there. When you visit Facebook, it'll say something there up on the tab. Well, that's a different uh, block over here in our code. We've written in the body block, and therefore it shows up here. So possibly, if we write in the head block, it would be up on the title. Uh, the title bar. So let's back up to our code, line 4, tab. To access the tab of the web browser, we need to use the title tag. Now I'm going to write title tag as one line, the pair of tags here in one line. Yes, I could have written it as I've been doing before, broken into multiple lines, but I'm going to keep it on one line because actually it does not matter to the web browser if you've written your code broken into multiple lines or tabbed or kept on the same line. Technically, you can write all of your code on line one that goes on and on and on and on off the page. Um, that's very hard to read, but that is valid HTML. And sometimes we will break up our tabs into multiple lines, and sometimes we might keep them on a single line. This is just completely personal choice sometimes, as long as the code works and does what you need it to do. So let's just compare that, and we'll say here, Android app dev day one. We made some changes to our code. Save your code, run your code. That's our workflow, right? So save. Make sure the red disk has become a blue disk. Run Firefox. You can refresh your browser, or you can go back to run, launch. Question? It does. Good point. Uh, we'll get to that eventually. But yes, capitalization does matter, especially more when we get into JavaScript and CSS. In HTML at the moment, it really wouldn't matter if I'm calling this capital title, capital title. That should still work. HTML is rather forgiving. But because we are using HTML5, the latest standard, it should be lowercase. So almost all of our code that we're going to write will be lowercase. What we wrote for people is whatever case, but what we wrote in code should be lowercase. So let's see the result. I'm going to save that. I'm going to run it in Firefox. The reason I go back up to the menu to run it every time is I like that it has a tab of my previous version and then a tab of my new version just to kind of see the progression of what I've been doing. You can, of course, you're free to simply refresh your browser every time to have one tab. That's fine. But I'm going to be going up to the Run menu every time to kind of just show you progression. And all that really happened here is instead of saying the file name in the tab, it has something meaningful. It should have something meaningful. And that was because we wrote the title tag in the head block of our code, we will type. This is the concept of HTML. This tag, these tags are giving uh, meaning to the content. The title tag means to display it up on the tab. The body means to display it here in the viewport. That's the technical term for this. You might have known that as the, you know, the browser tab. This is the viewport. Everything that appears in this main area in body is the viewport.
And at the moment, the Hello World text appeared as normal text. But if you look at my syllabus, uh, there are sections of the text that are aligned differently. There are sections where there's bullet points. There are sections with italics and all of that. My syllabus could be uh, constructed with HTML to mark the different elements of the content. And so we're going to talk about the abstraction of layers later, which means basically there's a purpose for a language. Let me take a little detour here to go back to my notes. We're going to work with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in this three-month sequence. HTML, hypertext, markup, language, CSS, cascading, style sheets, And JavaScript stands for Jovial Avalanche of... No, I'm just kidding. JavaScript doesn't stand for anything. It's JavaScript. So, JavaScript. The point of each of these, they have a purpose. These three languages have a purpose uh, that help us accomplish something in our app. These are known as the different layers of our app. HTML is the content layer. CSS is the presentation layer. JavaScript is the behavior layer. I like to also liken content layer to uh, structure. presentation, design, and behavior interactivity. We write HTML to set up our structure and where we write our content. My syllabus, the structure is that I've got this section that has the title of the class. We've got a section that talks about the, the book. We've got a section that is the, the course uh, calendar different structure to our document. The content in each section, there's a section uh, of, of, the, of the calendar that has the dates. Um, what are we doing this week? That's content. There's a section where it's got my contact info. That's content also. Uh, the CSS aspect of things, well something is centered and something is bold and something is italics and the syllabus is in black and white but I could have easily put background colors and drop shadows and all of this interesting design. That's CSS used for design, for presentation, colors, alignment, um, drop shadows, even animation and things. It's our design aspect. And if, uh, if I had um, on the digital syllabus, there, I believe there might be a link in the syllabus. If you click that link, it opens a website. Well, that's interaction. That's, that's behavior. JavaScript then is used to react to something. I can write JavaScript to click a button to play an animation. I can hover over something to create a drop shadow. Something reacts. The web browser, the code reacts to you, and that's JavaScript's job. Uh, think in terms about what if we were programming a game. You have a timer. When the timer runs out, something has to happen. It has to check your high score. Did you beat the high score? Did you not beat it? Do you have an extra life? Things need to happen. Behavior, interaction. That's what JavaScript will do for us. So then that's why we cover these three languages to cover these three aspects of a web app, which will eventually become a mobile app. And we will be able to write JavaScript commands that will basically be translated into Java, Objective-C, and C-sharp via uh, Taco. Taco basically will translate our JavaScript commands into the appropriate language for each platform. 
So that's why in this class we're using these common web technologies. They're actually pretty powerful. If we get back to our code, we're creating some content in our content layer, HTML. Um, we can further uh, structure it by giving it meaning. We give a little meaning here with the title tag. I want to give this hello world a little more meaning. So let's uh, back up at the beginning of the word hello world. And we will add the the tag h1, it's a number 1, not an L, h1, heading 1, we want to uh, give this meaning that it's a heading number 1. On my syllabus there is something there that is big and bold and important looking. It has a meaning that it's big and bold, it's important. Heading 1. HTML, markup languages, we are marking between here and here with tags that something has a meaning or a structure. So we need to close the h1 tag at the end of the line. Closing the tag is shorthand for slash and then your tag slash tag slash tag slash tag. These are the closing tags of the opening tag pair. What I like about Notepad, again, is if you click, if you just simply click on the HTML tag, it shows you its pair. If you click on the head tag, it shows you its pair, h1, etc. Little basic thing like that, but once we have 500 lines of code, that's super helpful. Where did this block of code start and where did it end? You know, if you simply click that and 500 lines later, it'll show you where it ended. Most civilized code editors will let you do this. Sublime, brackets, eclipse, etc. So Notepad++ does it, of course. All right, let's see this result. We've, we've done a lot of hard work. Remember to save your work. Save your work and see what the h1 tag does in the browser. Run Firefox. Hello world. Before, after. The h1 tag now gave it a meaning. So with our HTML code, we're creating structure, we're adding meaning to our content. It's most evident in the example like I've been saying about the syllabus. There's different sections in our document. Uh, let's give ourselves a new line 8. When we wrote hello world originally we didn't write any tags around it to give it any meaning, but it had an inherent meaning where the text look, looked pretty basic. Sometimes we need to write important looking text like that and sometimes we need to write basic text. We shouldn't assume that things will work how we envision. We should be specific, especially when it comes to computers. Because when you learn any programming language, you're going to realize how dumb computers are. You're going to realize that computers do exactly what you tell them and no more. If you program it to do something, it'll do that. And it won't really learn and go beyond. And eventually, perhaps one day, artificial intelligence will be at, at our level. But right now, computers, they're dumb. They don't know what to do unless you program them to do something. So we shouldn't assume that it'll do what I wanted it to do. We should be specific. What I want is to write a little paragraph of text. So I could start writing some text, as we saw it previously worked without any special markup, but we shouldn't assume. So we will write the P tag, P for paragraph. And because I want to write more than one line, I'm going to break my paragraph tags, P tags, paragraphs, into a couple of lines like that. I personally, if I need to write just a little bit of text in a tag. I like to keep it on one line, but if I write to, need to write multiple things in a tag, I break it into multiple lines. 
technically you are saving a few bytes here and there, which could add up. But personally for me, that's what I do. Because we're going to write more than one sentence here in this paragraph. Let's look it up. In between the P tags, let's write, this is day one out of the class. Period. Enter. Instructor Victor is our instructor. Period. Enter. I'm learning a lot. So write a little text, write a little paragraph, save it and run it, see what happens. <coughs> okay, remember to save it, run it. There's my paragraph. Wait a minute, does it look like a paragraph? I clearly hit enter at the end of each of those lines. But this is to illustrate that HTML, or the web browser that is, really didn't understand that. I, of course, thought about pressing enter to divide it into multiple lines, but again, computers are dumb. They didn't think I really wanted a paragraph, and therefore it kept it on one line. I didn't specify any code to break those lines. So let's specify line breaks. We'll back up to line 9 at the end of line 9. This is a tag that does not um, have a pair, the line break tag. It's just a single tag. So our tag is going to be the angle brackets, as always. BR. I'm going to break that line. This line is going to be rendered, and then break, new line, break, new line. So give yourself a break at the end of line 10. Now save and run that. Ah, that's more like it. There's before, there's after. So this does not have a pair just like doc type, notice how we've written it. If you have experience previously in HTML, you might have seen that, you might have written it break like that. That's valid, but not necessary. The modern HTML5 standard, this is perfectly fine. And if we close our tags like that, I wasted two whole bytes. Why would we do that? So, that'll work just fine. Those are breaks, no pairs. Let's say I wanted to also um, add a little bit of um, styling. I wanted to emphasize or draw attention to my content. Um, This is verging a little bit on styling, as in CSS, not quite. But CSS was a language that was invented years after HTML. HTML was invented in about 1989, and it was set up for a very dry purpose of, you know, educational purpose. Then eventually people wanted to make it look nice. So CSS was invented in about 1998. So almost a decade later to get good styling. So this tag that we're going to write is sort of on the brink between the two of content layer and presentation layer. Um, I want to make uh, my, my name here stand out, uh, dr draw emphasis to it. So let's start a tag before Instructor Victor. 
the EM tag, which is emphasis. We want to emphasize my name. But remember, we often have pairs of tags. This is going to start to emphasize what I've written here and go on and on and on and on because I never closed it. So where should we close our emphasis tag? After my name, let's try. So we're marking this will be emphasized. Instructor Victor will be emphasized. Save and run that. And you'll see here that we're giving some meaning to our content. HTML is to build uh, a structure to write our content, to give meaning to our document. Later with CSS, we can make it look pretty. Colors, shadows, fonts, all that stuff. Animation. And then still further later, we can make it do something, such as uh, you know, clicking my name and making a pop-up happen and asking how was your day and then giving you feedback and all this advanced stuff. JavaScript. Later. And for the moment, it emphasizes my name. Looks italics, italicized to me. But the meaning is that it's been emphasized. My name there. Um, one more thing, then we'll take a break. Uh, we've been doing the ML part of HTML, the markup language. Let's do the HT part, hypertext. So in the beginning when Sir Tim Berners-Lee invented HTML, uh, the big idea was, what if I have one digital document and I link it to another digital document? Nowadays, obviously, 25 years later, it's obvious. Links. But in 1989 and before, it wasn't so obvious. And there had been different Im implementations like SGML and such. But HTML, what rules the world now, is a way to mark that as a link. What if I want to learn more? What if I click on that to learn more? A link, a hyperlink. Let's create first a new paragraph. Line 13, give yourself a new P tag. A new paragraph of content. And I'll say, visit his website on Facebook. Obviously, you don't have to run it yet, but if you, if you run that, you will see that that has become a new paragraph. It has been broken from that one. It's basically double spacing it. These are like single spaces, the breaks. The break is like single spacing. P tag is sort of like double spacing. So I've got some uh, new content there in its own little block, in that P block, that paragraph. And what I want to do is make it so that if I click somewhere, it will go to my web page on Facebook. So the hypertext aspect of HTML. Um, to make it easy, let's just say the whole thing. All of this, I want to be able to click on it to visit my website. This will be a tag, and it has a pair. So I'll start the tag. And it would have been obvious to use the link tag, but don't use the link tag. The link tag has a different meaning, although it would make sense for us nowadays. This is a link. No, it made more sense to use the A tag back when this was invented. A for anchor. This is an anchor. This allows us to click on it to go somewhere. So start the A tag, end the A tag, anchor. You can think of it as active link, sure. This A tag will become an active link. This is a special tag up to this point in that it's not complete. It doesn't do what it needs to do completely yet. The P tag does what it needs to do, makes a paragraph. H1 makes it big and bold. A tag doesn't really do anything yet unless you give it parameters. So, um, I'm sorry, no, um, attributes. Unless you give it an attribute. What website are we linking to? So we have to give this the website attribute. And the syntax, the way we do this is, 
back up to right after the A tag. You, you should see possibly down here on Notepad++ uh, it's telling you uh, line and column. So I'm on line 14 and as I move over to the right or the left column tells you. So if you want to be really specific, I'm on line 14, column 15. If yours is a little bit different, that's okay. and That'll often happen. I might tell you, go to line 14, and yours is on line 16, because you did something slightly different. That's okay. But I'm on line 14, right after the A tag, cursor, press space. We're in the tag, and now we need to add an attribute. H R E F hypertext reference. That's the fancy name for the link, the address, the URL. This is the address that I want to send people to once they click this anchor text. And the attribute syntax is we, we name it and then we write equals. And then here, quote, end quote. The quotes are right next to the enter on your keyboard, right next to the colon. If you simply type that symbol next to the enter, you'll get the single quote. Single quote. I said, I meant double quote, double quote. If you have any experience in any programming language, there's single quotes or single tick, double tick. They have technical names. Um, HTML really uh, won't matter if we use the single quote or the double quote. We're going to write something in between them, but I had said double quotes. Our syntax is, okay, what website are we linking to? Within the double quotes, put in a web address, http colon slash slash facebook.com slash instructor Victor C Save it and run it and what should happen is if you click anywhere in that paragraph in that line, it should open a website a hypertext link we don't call that anymore but 20 six years ago, this is a hyperlink. This is a link to a website. If uh, it went off to some other weird place, check your spelling. Facebook.com instructor slash instructor Victor C. I get the familiar underline that tells me it might be a link. I put my mouse over it and I get the hand cursor that says it's a link. Everything else is plain text, but now this has the meaning of a hypertext link. The A tag is made in an active link. I click it. It went off to Facebook. It should have gone off to Facebook. We'll do a break in a moment to check people's work, but it should have gone off to Facebook. All right, so 17 lines of code at this point. We've been looking at these various tags. There's, you know, 200 more to learn. We're not going to learn all 200. We don't need to learn all 200 tags for this class. You know, we'll, we'll learn a dozen or two, or whatever we need for the project. Same thing with CSS. There's, you know, 200 CSS codes that we can learn. We don't need all 200. We need 20, 40. I don't know. JavaScript. Do we need to learn all 200 JavaScript commands? No, just the ones that help us do what we need to accomplish. We can look up the rest. Um, I think it was Albert Einstein that said, you know, I don't even know my own phone number. I don't need to. I can look it up. I don't need to know all the codes. I can look it up when I need it. 
And yes, it's very impressive to pull up every single line of code whenever you need it. But it's okay that you have to look it up. That's why books are made. That's why websites are made that have these references and tutorials and so forth. One more thing, then we'll take a break. We've been writing all of this code that the computer, that the web browser has been looking at and rendering and showing on the web browser. Let's write the comment tag, which is literally that, a comment. It's, it's not valid code. It's not telling the computer, do this. It's a comment to ourselves. Uh, let's go give yourself a new line after line 15. This is one of the most unique ones. It's written like this. Angle bracket, exclamation point, dash dash, couple of enters, dash dash, angle bracket. That's the pair. You just have to memorize it. It doesn't look like anything else we've looked at. That's the comment tag in HTML. Notice it's green in Notepad++. In most code editors, this will be a different color. P tag and H ta H1 tag, these are blue. href attribute is red, not that it's wrong, it's just that it's red. The web address is purple, so you'll see this color coding. This is what a good text editor will give you, so that at a glance I can quickly go look at my attributes, or links, or comments, and such. This is a an HTML comment. The computer web browser ignores it. If you save and run that, you should not see that appear on screen. Because the comment tag has hidden it in the viewport from the regular user. It's not in the viewport. It's in the code, but not the viewport. And if I was some sort of elite hacker and I went in here and maybe looked at the source code, I could find it. There it is. I'm going to take a break in a moment. Any general questions at this point? All right, it's 8. Oh, 03. Let's take a, one more break. We'll be back at 8.13. Uh, if your code didn't quite work, call me over. When we come back, we'll learn some more code. I have a question not related to our topic about uh, uh, parking. Uh, should we get a parking permit for this location? Or to my knowledge, parking is free at the moment. Just don't park in the instructor's mm -hmm. spots, and you should be able to park anywhere in the structure. Oh. Okay.